Hi, in this video we'll be looking at unit elasticity in order to round off our discussion of price elasticity. In the previous videos we looked at elastic demand and inelastic demand and so we are left with one case which is where our price elasticity of demand is equal to 1. So carrying on from the previous videos it should be clear that with unit price elasticity a percentage change in price will cause an equal percentage change in quantity demanded. So if we were to say increase price for a good by 10%, unit price elasticity will mean that our change in quantity will also be 10%. And this could be an increase of 10% in quantity or a decrease in quantity. So unit elasticity could be our PED equal to one or it could be equal to minus one. As we said, we ignore the negative sign when we're talking about this. So that should be quite straightforward. That's what unit elasticity is, and it's just one particular case. And we might think of a number of goods and services that could have an elasticity around one. Now, obviously, PED being exactly equal to one is going to be very rare because we're restricting ourselves to just one or two numbers if we think of plus and minus one and in reality our PED is more likely to maybe be 0.9 it could be like 0.98 0.97 so it's technically say inelastic or it could be 1.02 and it's technically elastic but having having a good around unit elasticity is obviously something that is reasonable to have increasing price by 10% will decrease our quantity demanded by 10% that seems somewhat reasonable so what we can now do, as we did with the elastic and inelastic price elasticities, is we can see what this would look like on a diagram. But with the unit price elasticity, I'll do something slightly different. And we're going to have our price elasticity equal to one, or being unit elastic, at every point of this demand curve. So this is what we call a constant price elasticity demand curve, because at every point on it, the PED is equal to one or equal to minus one. And so this is different from the elastic and inelastic diagrams as we will discuss in a moment and in future videos a bit more as well, is that those demand curves were not actually constant elasticity. And when we have a straight line demand curve, we don't actually have constant price elasticity on them. At some points it will be inelastic and other points it will be elastic which is something we may not realize when we're just looking at the basic, well, if we, below I've got, say, a straight line demand curve. And um, what we'll see is that actually the elasticity changes across this demand curve, which is something that confuses some people. Because if we are going to have a constant elasticity of one, what people might think is that we should have a constant slope and thus our slope should be a straight line because that, that seems intuitive, but actually our price elasticity is not the slope of our demand curve. It's linked to the slope, but it's not equal to it. Because with elasticities, we're looking at percentage changes instead of just changes in our units along the axes. So let's look at this demand curve and hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. So as we did with the previous videos, but now we're gonna use some numerical values to make this a bit clearer. Let's pick a price on our y-axis and we pick a price of 10, let's say 10 pounds. And if we draw along to our demand curve, we see that this is giving us a quantity of 10 of whatever good or service this demand curve is showing us. So let's consider now that we increase our price and we're gonna increase the price by 20%. So now for our price of 12, we see that our demand curve is dictating that our quantity demanded falls to eight. And we should be able to see that this is a reduction in demand of 20%. So clearly we have a price elasticity of one because an increase of price by 20% has caused a decrease in quantity demanded by 20%. And so our PED is equal to one or it is equal to minus one. So that seems quite straightforward and at this stage of our demand curve it seems to make some sense because oh, that was meant to be a straight line. If 
we just insert a line quickly. If we have a look at this, we will see, and if I make this a bit thicker so it's a bit clearer, and let's change the color to say orange, we see that the, this demand curve, it looks something like how we, we draw a standard demand curve where we're not really thinking about elasticity. And it's got, it's got a fairly reasonable slope. It's not overly steep or overly flat. So this seems to make sense as a unit elastic demand curve. However, let's now move up to a more extreme value on our demand curve. And let's start at a price of £25. And if we were to run along our line here, we see that this is going to give us a quantity demanded of 5 on the x-axis. Let's now again increase our price by 20%, although now we're going to notice that an increase of 20% here is going to be an increase of 5, whereas before it was an increase of 2, so we have a bigger movement along the y-axis up to 30. But because our demand curve is so steep here, because we've got a curved demand curve, our change in quantity demanded is going to be very small. And so it looks like we've got quite an inelastic demand curve here because it's very steep. And our quantity demand is only going to fall by one. It falls to four. However, a decrease from five to four, if we know our percentages, we will see that this is still a 20% decrease. One is 20% of five, and we've just fallen by one. So again, we've got an increase in price of 20% and a decrease in quantity of 20%. So our PED is still equal to 1 here. So how, how is this the case, given that our, if we were to again draw our line here, we see that this is now a very steep line. And we can see that it is steeper than the line we drew before if we make it thicker and make it orange again. If we compare these two lines, one is steeper than the other, so we'd think that one is inelastic and one is more elastic, but these are both, both points on this curve are price unit elastic. And this, again, it should be clear, is because we are talking about percentage changes. And as we move up our price axis, a percentage change is going to require a larger change in the units of price. So a 20% change up here is 5, whereas a 20% change here is only 2. And the same is true on the x-axis. A 20% change here is going to be 2, and a percentage change we move closer to 0 is going to be only 1. We need a smaller change to give us the same percentage change as we move closer uh, to the origin of our, whoops, as we move to the origin, which is here. And as we move uh, along the axis, we're going to need a larger change. So this is why if we want to keep a constant elasticity, our demand curve is going to have to be really steep as we move up and we move up to price towards infinity. And as we move as quantity to infinity, it's going to have to be really flat. And in the middle, our demand curve is then going to be somewhat in between. We're going to have our slope curves round quite sharply in sort of the middle area as we have a, a price somewhere in the middle of these axes and a quantity somewhere in the middle. So that's why for a constant elasticity it's going to have to be a curved, well, a curved demand curve because we're looking at percentage changes. That's the reason for it. So if we go back to our straight line demand curve, very quickly we can run through this and see that, say, if we start at a price of 10 and we increase our price by 20% up to 12, well, if we use our demand curve here and go down to these quantity demandeds down here, we can see that this on this demand curve will cause a decrease in quantity demanded of 10%. And if we then run through the numbers here, we'll see that the PED at this point of the demand curve is going to be sort of minus 10 divided by 20, and so this is going to be a price elasticity of minus 0.5. So a, our large change in price has caused a smaller change in quantity demanded. However, if we go up our 
access to 18 and I'm quickly realizing that my numbers here might not check out. Sorry, I did this quite quickly. So let's instead say that this is 20 going up to 22, just so the numbers are a bit nicer. But we see that this is, say, an increase of price of 10%. And if we were then to use our demand curve, we see that we go down from 10 to 8. So this is then a decrease of 20% in on our quantity axis. So at this point, if we do this in a different color, PED is going to be equal to minus 20 over 10. And so our PED here is minus 2. So a small percentage change in price has caused a large percentage change in quantity demanded. So at this point of the curve, we have an elastic demand curve. And at the other point on the curve, we have an inelastic demand curve. And indeed, if we were to do lots more and do this exercise multiple times, we might see that somewhere half halfway between these points, we have a PED of one that is unit elastic. So that this that's just a quick demonstration that a straight line demand curve will not have constant elasticity. The reason in the previous videos we say drew our inelastic demand curve like this instead of a curved line is because, well, it's for simplicity, we like to keep our demand curves as a straight line. And indeed, at this point of our demand curve, as if we put some numbers on there, we could show that it's inelastic there. However, if we wanted it to be inelastic here uh, at, and, and here, and for it to be inelastic at all points of the demand curve, it would need to be a curve. So that is the reason why a unit elastic demand curve may be drawn and curved because we want to have it as a constant elasticity everywhere. But the fact is we don't need to depict it as a curve. We could draw it like this orange line we did here so that it's just unit elastic in the middle. And then when we draw across our price and quantity, we can demonstrate that it's sort of unit elastic in the middle. And we don't really care too much about the extreme points of our demand curves because we don't we don't tend to use them. We like to have our demand intersecting our supply, say somewhere in the middle of our demand curve. So that, that's the reason why we can get away with drawing straight line demand curves to illustrate elastic and inelastic because well, it, it's a lot nicer to just draw a straight line demand curve. And in future videos, we'll see why because once we set up, say our supply and demand equilibrium, we, we can start, say, getting areas. And this, this is something, again, that we use. And we can we then have the areas are just nice triangles, and we can easily work out those things. So I won't go into too much detail, but it's basically just for simplicity. And that's the reason we do this. But again, that's the reason why we'd have a curved demand curve when we want a constant price elasticity, because we have percentage changes. So hopefully this video made a bit of sense and you learned something, and if it did, please do leave a like. Make sure to check out the playlist for more videos like this one, and subscribe to add some econ to your subscription feed.